Yo, what's up everybody? It is Friday, December 13th, Friday the 13th, in case you're superstitious. Uh, we had a mixed market close today. Folks, I want to talk about something very interesting that's going on right now, and I'm really excited to see how this plays out. We are seeing um, like almost an unprecedented increase in the fiscal flows. Right now, as of through December 12th, that's yesterday, the latest uh, daily treasury statement. So basically we've been in the fiscal year for two and a half months, October, November, half of December, two and a half months. We already have net government transfers. That's what everybody calls, you know, the deficit. I, I don't use the term deficit because it's, it's an in, really it's an inapplicable term. I use net government transfers. That's the net amount of money transferred into the economy by government spending. In other words, the top line spending, then taxes taken away, what remains, okay? 750 billion already in two and a half months net addition of financial balances to the economy, 750 billion. It, and it happened again, like two and a half months. Last year, it took until mid-March to reach that number, almost April, okay? Let's call it right on the borderline, end of March, early April to reach that number. And we reached it in two and a half months. This is a massive, massive injection of uh, financial assets, money, essentially money into the economy. Now, here's why I say it's a very interesting scenario that we have right now, because you know that everybody and a lot of you out there who make comments on my uh, channel here, you always say that money printing, they're printing money, they're printing money. That's what creates inflation, okay? You never talk about anything like, um, you know, the availability of real resources or labor or the supply chain. For you, for many of you, and maybe not so many who follow my channel, but for, for everybody else out there, that's all you hear about. Government spending creates inflation. Government spending creates inflation. Money printing. Government spending. Money printing. Gov so... We are right now in a real-time laboratory to test out this theory, okay? We are having a massive surge in government spending. You know, a lot of it's still coming from interest income transfers. A lot of it's coming from, you know, uh, non-discretionary things like Social Security because the Recipient roles are going up. Medicare, again, recipient roles are going up. Um, we've had military expenditures, uh, a bunch of things, okay? It doesn't matter. All I'm saying is that it has been a massive increase in two and a half months, all right? Massive, if you want to call it money printing, be my guest. I call it uh, government transfers. If we don't see inflation from this, and the last inflation report we just got, the CPI, was the, um, uh, the November CPI, where I believe, if I remember the number correctly, like the core inflation rate, you know, minus uh, food and energy, I think that was something around 2.4%, you know, like almost close to what the Fed is shooting for. And that was November. That was just, you know, what, not even two weeks ago. So here's the thing. And for those of you who keep saying money printing, money printing, I mean, basically we're seeing like, kind of like what we saw during the COVID thing. But I know a lot of you would never admit that the inflation from COVID was due to the global shutdown of the supply chain. You know, if, for you or for many of these, uh, everybody else out there, 
who are non-followers of this channel, for them it's just about government spending. That's including like Elon Musk and Ramaswamy and these people who want to cut spending, okay? Because for them, it's all about government spending. They don't look at any other variable other than that. So what I'm saying to you guys is we're very lucky right now. We are very, very lucky because we get to observe this in real time. And right now, the economy is functioning normally. There's no uh, supply chain issues that I'm aware of. Okay. Everything's operating normally. We're not in a pandemic. You know, businesses are not closed. People are not being asked to stay home and not work. So like we're in this laboratory right now. And I want to tell you, if we don't see inflation come out of this, because again, this is a massive, massive increase in spending in a very short period of time. If we don't see like, uh, you know, a really significant increase in this inflation rate, then I want to tell you that your whole theory is bogus. It's bullshit. It doesn't apply. And that we have the proof right in front of our faces if it turns out that we don't see some massive spike in inflation. And I'm sorry, but you cannot opposite to the, you cannot, I'm sorry, you cannot argue to the contrary. If you try to argue to the contrary, if we see no real pickup in inflation, and you're still saying that government spending causes inflation, then all you are is, is buried deep up into your ass into this mythology. Okay? And I can't pay any attention to you because I don't know how much more clear. Again, we're very, very lucky because we have this now real time experiment right in front of our eyes. According to you, or maybe not to you again, I, I got to give respect to the people who follow this channel with the exception of some who keep posting up comments about how it's money printing and this and that. Um, to everybody else who keeps screaming about this, we better see some big time increase in inflation. Because if we don't, and by the way, I, I personally am of the opinion that we're not going to see that. Because like I said, many times, if you believe in capitalism, which I think most of you do, and most of even these people out there who keep talking and screaming, you know, Elon Musk, he's a capitalist. If you are a capitalist, then, like I've said in the past, there is no way you can seriously argue that government spending creates inflation because then you completely ignore the profit motive of capitalism where government spending would induce the private sector to create the goods and services necessary for that money to, to purchase. So uh, I'm excited, man, I'm really excited. Um, I don't think we're gonna see a big pickup in inflation. Uh, I'm not seeing it anywhere like in, I, I mean, what, I filled up my gas tank today at, at uh, what, two ninety four a gallon? I mean, that's pretty cheap. I think that's pretty cheap. And actually that's down. That was down from a couple of weeks ago. So like, let's see what happens. I mean, let's see what happens. I'm excited. I wanna see, and I'll be the first one to say, that if we see a big uptick in inflation, I was wrong. That it is only about the money and nothing else. But I'm pretty sure we're not going to see that. All right? Because the economy is functioning normally. 
Uh, everybody's working. We have low unemployment. There's no supply chain issues. All right. Um, so it's going to be very, very interesting. So don't worry. I'll, I'll be back here talking about this stuff. And by the way, on a side note, just, uh, you know, talking markets, if I'm going to talk markets, and the bond market is selling off again because everybody's worried about inflation. Well, again, I'm saying there's not going to be a big uptick in inflation. And this, this scare, this fear of, you know, that's manifesting in the bond market in terms of prices selling off, I think it's wrong. And I think it's a buying opportunity in treasuries. That's just me, okay? Now... Maybe I'm going to be wrong. Maybe we'll see a big spike in inflation. But again, that's not my view. As long as the economy is functioning normally. Uh, and we saw, by the way, with the tariff thing, that China is already considering devaluing their currency, which that's a whole other discussion where I, I've said many times that exports are a cost. They're not... You know, they're not a benefit. I mean, China literally has to subvert and depress the purchasing power of their own people just to keep the volume of goods flowing. I mean, what kind of, a, of an economy, what kind of a system is that? What kind of a strategy is that? You got to keep your people working, you know, slaves at low wages. You got to suppress their purchasing power. Here's something. I'll leave you off with this. The Chinese economy, the GDP of China on a purchasing power parity basis, that means the amount of goods produced, it's bigger than the United States um, economy. Okay, their GDP purchasing power parity is bigger than the United States. Yet, GDP per capita, in other words, what each Chinese citizen uh, receives as a product of their labor is only worth about $12,600. Whereas in the United States, it's worth about $85,000. So in order for China to maintain this ridiculous, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous for them. It's great for us because we get the goods cheap. But in order for them to keep doing that, you see how much they have to suppress the standard of living of their own citizens at the 12,000 annual per capita compared to 86,000 here. Who's got the better end of the deal? And we want to be like them? No, I don't think so. But I don't make policy. Anyway, that's it for tonight. It's Friday. Go out, enjoy. And um, please like and subscribe. And don't forget, go to my website and sign up for a 30-day free trial to MMT Trader. I'll see you. Have a nice weekend. Bye.